hi everyone in this video i am going to start in the wien bridge concept so wien bridge is used to measure the unknown frequency in the previous uh, videos i have shared different types of bridges like shearing bridge hayes bridge maxwell's bridge inductance comparison capacitance comparison all these bridges are used to measure the unknown components like capacitance resistance inductance but now wien's bridge is used to measure purely the unknown frequency it is used to measure the unknown frequency of the applied signal okay so let us see the bridge of this wien's bridge this is the bridge consisting of four arms where the first arm is consisting of series r and c series resistance and capacitance and the second arm is purely a resistance and third arm is consisting of a parallel combination of resistance and series so there's resistance and capacitance so r3 and c3 are in parallel whereas the fourth arm is having a pure resistive network r4 now this is the place where we are applying the unknown frequency of the signal so we are applying some sinusoidal or whatever maybe the signal we are giving here that signal's frequency is unknown that frequency can be yielded from because of this wind bridge okay and this is the detector now if you see the bridge arms properly the third arm is having a parallel combination of resistance and capacitance i told you already when we are going to measure the unknown uh, components of any type of uh, bridge or any type of component when we have this type of uh, resistance and capacitance in parallel then definitely we should go for admittance instead of impedance okay it is always better to go for admittance in uh, when we are having a parallel combination of resistance and capacitance because it gives easiest cal easiest calculations when compared to admit uh, impedance okay so during bridge balanced condition so when bridge is balanced so what is the notation z1 z4 is equal to z2 z3 so z1 z4 is nothing but opposite terms of multiple uh, impedances multiplied together and equated so what is z1 what is z2 z3 z4 we need to write here so i already told you before going to the uh, substitution part let us see which is which arm is having the parallel combination which arm is having the parallel combination third arm that means z3 must be replaced by y3 so how to replace z3 as y3 so take this z3 on this other hand so you have to write z2 is equal to z1 z4 into it becomes 1 by z3 nothing but y3 take this as equation 1 now take the values from the circuit what is z1 it is a series combination of resistance and capacitance so r1 plus 1 by j omega c1 what is z2 z2 is equal to simply r2 and what is z3 z3 is not there now we have taken y3 so y3 is equal to 1 by r3 plus j omega c3 this is the advantage when you go for admittance rather than impress directly we are writing the notation in terms of just addition suppose if you are writing the z3 instead of y3 then you have to write r3 in parallel with 1 by j omega c3 then it becomes again complex when we multiply in this equation 1 okay so that's why it is better to consider it is better to consider i am not uh, suggesting you to take only admittance always okay it is a better way okay so z4 is equal to simply r4 now substitute in the equation 1 so from equation 1 from equation 1 so after substituting z2 is nothing but simply r2 so r2 is equal to z1 r1 plus 1 by j omega c1 into z4 what is z4 simply r4 into what is y3 1 by r3 plus j omega c3 okay so multiply 1 by 1 r1 r4 plus r4 by j omega c1 
into 1 by R3 plus J omega C3 is equal to. So, now again substitute R1 R4 by R3 multiply this factor with this factor. So, R1 R4 by R3 plus J omega R1 R4 C3 plus R4 by R4 by J omega C1 R3 plus so J omega J omega gets cancelled when we multiply these two R4 C3 by C1. This part is equal to simply R2. So now equate the real and imaginary parts. This is the real part on the left hand side. We don't have any imaginary part on the left hand side. So it is 0 and it is also a real part and the last one is also a real part. So what we will get when we equate the real part R2 is equal to R1 R4 by R3 plus R4 C3 by C1. Now take that part. So by equating equate real and imaginary part equate real and imaginary parts so by equating the real parts uh, what is that r2 is equal to r1 r4 divided by r3 plus r4 into c3 by c1 and similarly when we equate the imaginary part, what is the imaginary part we have? R J omega R1 R4 C3 J omega R1 R4 C3 plus R4 by J omega C1 R3 is equal to 0. So, R4 goes to 0, J omega R1 R4 C3 is equal to, you can write it as minus R4 by J omega C1 R3. So, this R4, this R4 cancel and this minus this J and this J, these three are cancel. So, we have omega R1 C3 is equal to 1 by omega R3 C1. Okay. So, omega square, take this omega onto this one and R1 C3 onto this side. Omega square is equal to 1 by R1 C1 R3 C3. So, what is omega? 2 pi F whole square. Square if you get goes to the other side under root. So, R1 C1 R3 C3. So, F is equal to 1 by 2 pi root of R1 C1 R3 C3. Okay, this is the frequency of oscillations in the wind bridge. Frequency of oscillations in the wind bridge. So, we are calculating the unknown frequency in this way. Okay. So, you can also say during bridge balance condition, we can simply substitute the components in such a way that R1 is equal to R3 is equal to R, C1 is equal to C3 equal to C. Then what happens? So, if you substitute R1, R3, it becomes R square and again C becomes C square. So, F is equal to simply 2 pi RC. So, this is said to be frequency of oscillations in the wind bridge. Okay. So, wind bridge is used to measure the unknown capacity, uh, sorry, unknown frequency value, unknown frequency value that too, the wind bridge is said to be operated in only the audio frequency range. You have to remember these points. Okay. So, wind bridge measures the unknown frequency frequency measurement 
done in audio frequency range frequency measurement could be done in audio frequency range so what is the range of audio frequency 20 edges to 20 kilohertz so in this range of frequencies our wind pitch can be able to measure the unknown frequency component so and also the accuracy of this wind bridge is varied from 0.5 percent to 1 percent 0.5 percent to 1 percent of the accuracy of this bridge okay and the bridge is also used in a harmonic distortion analyzer as a notch filter as a notch filter and in audio frequency and radio frequency oscillators as a frequency determining element okay so in digital Fourier analyzer digital Fourier analyzer this wind bridge is used or employed okay so wind bridge oscillator has been used as a notch filter as notch filter as a notch filter it is used in the application of digital Fourier analyzer where we are getting the sampled version of the signal or process FFT processed signal at the output for the input continuous and solar signal and in several uh, signal generators also in the concept of signal generators we also came across this wind bridge oscillator in the AF sin and uh, AF sin and square wave generator if you remember we have discussed this AF sin and square wave generator so there in the first uh, as a part of oscillations generator we have taken the wind bridge oscillator where it generates only the cycles in audio frequency range in such a way also we have used this wind bridge oscillator in practical applications okay so this is about wind bridge in the next video i will explain different problems how to do on this wind bridge oscillator thank you